science, inheriting the ancient beliefs of the Persians, see the world as divided into good and evil, justifying all the horrors of war and conquest. The Crusades leave a sinister legacy. In the middle of the campaign, Pope Gregory IX founds the Inquisition. Controlled by the Dominican Order of Friars, the Inquisition's job is to find heretics and hand them over to local princes for punishment. The Inquisition gave people plenty to be frightened of, it gave them the fires of hell to be frightened of, and it gave them in a more immediate sense the Inquisition itself. They had the right to arrest that person without telling them who'd accused them, or indeed what they were accused of. The accused are guilty until found innocent, and can be held for as long as the authorities want. Anyone who questions the Inquisition is immediately suspected of being in league with the devil. In the fight against Satan and the powers of evil, Medieval rulers believe that, as in any war, information is vital. Up till now, the church has not officially allowed Christians to be tortured, although torturing Jews and Muslims is acceptable. But in May 1252, Pope Innocent IV rules that Christians suspected of heresy can be tortured until they confess they are working for the devil and inform on co-conspirators. Once you've set up a debate that defines somebody as a Satanist, as, as a servant of Satan, then you have put them in a position where you can do what you want to them because you are justified by working for the forces of good. Generally, once somebody had been accused of heresy, there was no way they could clear themselves. No matter what they said, because they were a heretic, therefore in league with the devil, therefore anything they said was like to be a lie. But the torturers can't do whatever they please. They are supposed to follow strict guidelines. In theory, and according to Pope Innocent IV in the middle of the 13th century, torture should be limited, it should not draw blood, it should not lead to serious permanent damage to the person who's being tortured. In practice, these regulations are not always followed. But there's also something which the psychologists would refer to as a rationalization process that it could all be very well for them to say oh yes we are trying to save your immortal soul we're trying to keep you out of hell we're trying to prevent the devil from getting you and what they really mean is we rather fancy your farm all over Europe the new powers supposed to be used against Satan are used by the unscrupulous to seize wealth or to do down their enemies. In 1307, King Philip the Fair of France brings witchcraft charges against the leaders of the Knights Templar, the fabulously wealthy order of Crusaders. Philip accuses the Templars of worshipping a pagan idol called Baphomet, a supposedly satanic figure. The Templars have been involved in the Middle East in negotiations with Muslims and some people in Western Europe thought they had a league with the Muslims and because the Muslims, everybody knew, in inverted commas, were involved in magic, there is therefore a hint that perhaps the Templars were involved in magic too. They were attacked and largely destroyed on Friday the 13th of October in 1307. Sealed orders given by Philip Le Bel to his seneschals to attack every Templar stronghold simultaneously. Ever since the purge of the Templars, Friday the 13th has been seen as an unlucky day, somehow connected with satanic forces. In 1320, the war against Satan has wound up another notch. Pope John XXII orders the Inquisition to target any kind of witchcraft, sorcery or necromancy. A big worry is that unscrupulous priests who know how to drive out devils with the rites of exorcism might instead use exorcism to invite the devil in. Formulas, Latin formulas and rituals which can be used to command the demon. Now, once you've got 
a Latin formula that has power to command a demon. I could use that to command a demon to do my washing up, you know? I could use that power to command a demon to get this woman I fancy into bed. The necromancers are interested in using the formulae of exorcism to command demons to do other things that they are interested in. You know, a demon could make me rich. A demon could find some hidden treasure for me. Fear that necromancers and witches are all around, conjuring up demons and making pacts with the devil, sweeps across Europe. One of the first cases investigated by the Inquisition is in the Irish city of Kilkenny. In 1324, in a dispute over inheritance, one of the richest women in the town, Dame Alice Catela, is accused of witchcraft, heresy, and of having a demon lover called Robin. Alice Catela, a landowner in Kilkenny, who had several husbands, so her stepchildren brought a charge against her that she'd poisoned her previous husbands in order to obtain the land. And she poisoned or killed them otherwise through witchcraft. Alice manages to escape to England. Her unfortunate servant, Petronella, is tortured and burned at the stake. The campaign against necromancers, sorcerers and witches lasts 300 years and kills between 60,000 and 300,000 people. The vast majority of the victims are women. Women were thought of as being more prone to the devil, more likely to sin, more likely to be led astray. They were also thought to be less intellectual than men. Women were seen as closer to animals. And part of this was that they were more susceptible to temptation, that they were more easily seduced by material gratification. As the Inquisition goes about its grisly business, rounding up suspects and interrogating them, many clerics and lay people worry that it's all guesswork. Perhaps they're missing even more witches than they're finding. But how can you tell who is one of Satan's helpers? What you need is a standard test. In 1486, two German Dominican monks publish a textbook for inquisitors called Maleus Maleficarum, the hammer of witches. The book contains a clever catch-22. Not only is witchcraft heresy, not believing in witches is heresy as well. The Manius Maleficarum was the manual, the how to get rid of all these demonic fleas that had infested a human being. It was a book of what witches were, what witches did. Maleus Maleficarum tells the Inquisitor everything he needs to know. Witches have the mark of Satan on their bodies, a birthmark or a wart. They can fly by rubbing magical herbs on their skin. And they gather at Satan worshipping ceremonies called Sabbaths. At these, they celebrate a twisted version of the Christian Mass, kissing the devil's rear end in a blasphemous act of homage. Certainly there was a fear at that time, which was why Malleus Maleficarum sold so many copies and ran through so many editions and is still in print. Thirty years after Maleus Maleficarum was written, Martin Luther leads the Protestant Reformation, splitting the Christian Church in two. Each faction, Protestant and Catholic, claims the other is in league with the evil one. Both sides use Maleus Maleficarum to find Satanists, and not just in order to destroy them. Witch hunting is a kind of scientific quest. The idea is, if you can understand witches and the devil, you can fight them. The whole business of witch hunting is, is, is almost a sort of intellectual research project. I need to gather a bit more data about, uh, you know, what, what demons do. So I'm going to interrogate a few more witches to get a bit more data, and then I'm going to write it up in my book. The cutting edge of scientific inquiry. Right across Europe, hysteria about Satan sweeps Protestant and Catholic countries alike. 
In Scotland, James VI, one of the best educated kings in Europe, is so caught up in the craze, he writes a book about the devil and witchcraft. Called Demonology, James' book sets out to prove that Satan-worshipping witches are everywhere and that they are the gravest threat to the security of the state. 